Hey everybody, how's it going? I uh, live in Albuquerque, New Mexico, which is a mile high, like Denver. Where I'm sitting right now is about 5,175 feet. Naturally, I do a lot of flying of my drone in high altitude situations. I've not really noticed any problems with the Inspire, but you know, we're always looking for ways to improve battery life and flight characteristics. So a friend of mine turned me on to these altitude props that DJI manufactures. They're the uh, 1360s, which I imagine is uh, 13 inches long with a 60 degree pitch. I thought I would give these a try on my drone. So he let me borrow his, and the first thing I noticed was that the drone was quieter. Now that's kind of a carrot for me, because when I fly my drone doing jobs, sometimes I'll do autonomous flight, or sometimes I'll be doing real estate or something, invariably I'm gonna fly over somebody's house somewhere. And if they hear the drone, and they look up, they say, oh, someone's spying on me, and of course I'm not. But I've had people actually drive up to me and say, hey, if I see that drone over my house, I'm going to shoot it down. I'm going to shoot it down. Well, I got news for you, Buford. It's illegal to discharge your firearm within city limits. It's not illegal for me to fly my drone over your house. It's okay that that news helicopter, that two-ton news helicopter is flying over my house. That's okay. It's called an easement. Google it, Buford. Anyways, the idea of having a quieter prop is kind of a carrot for me. Another reason for doing this video is, of course, DJI has absolutely no information on these props. Like, I thought it was pretty reasonable to ask them what is the altitude range for the OEM props, and then what is the altitude range for the high altitude props. I expected an answer like, well, the uh, OEM props are good for 0 to 6,000 feet MSL, and the altitude props are good for 5,000 to 15,000 feet MSL, or something like that. Look at these stupid answers I got. 2500 is already a high altitude. The high propellers can fly as high as the remote signal can provide signal. However, it is not advisable due to it might fly away in the connection or is lost. What kind of answer is that? That's retarded. But anyways, don't even get me started on DJI. I love your products, DJI, but your support... I'm basically going to do two duplicate flights. I'm going to fly a double grid out over the Mesa at 150 feet AGL. I'm going to record my battery percentage at takeoff and at landing. I believe this will net a good apples to apples comparison of the two props. I know I could just hover and maybe I'll do that test later. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a flight out on the Mesa. I'm going to take my bird, I'm going to fly up to 150 feet AGL. I'm going to put it in Addy mode and let her drift. This will not only give me the wind speed, but it'll tell me the wind direction, just so we have an idea of what we're dealing with. It feels rather balmy, I must say. It feels like about 60 degrees out here. All right, so the wind's blowing east, roughly, at three miles an hour. It's a very calm day. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up a mission in PIX4D. I'm just gonna set up like a double grid at 150 feet AGL and let her fly and then bring her back and we'll see how much battery we have left using the standard props. All right, and away we go. So there she is flying autonomously doing the mapping routine. Now you notice I didn't raise the landing gear. I don't see any real reason for raising the landing gear. The camera's pointing at an 80 degree angle for mapping. Now I did what's called a double grid. So the first grid was running east and west. And now she's doing the north-south portion of the grid. We're at 64% battery. Okay, we finished the mission and she's coming in to land. So we've got 37% battery. We took 226 images. So now let's switch out the props and the battery. Okay, because this is the first time I've had these props on this drone, I'm going to take off manually and sort of fly out a little bit towards the site, and then I'll initiate the PIX4D program. I'm uploading the mission to the drone. All right, so here we go. The first time flying this drone with these props. Oh, she's quiet. You know how quiet that is? All right, let's take off. And I'm going to upload the mission. 
and she's taken off. There she is. Now, like the other flight, we had 96% battery, so we've got a perfect apples to apples comparison. So right now she's heading west, so she's doing the west-east portion of the grid. Now she's heading south, and she'll come towards us, heading east. She's very quiet. I can't hear the bird at all. So we're at 58% battery right now, which I think is pretty comparable to where we were last time at this point of the mission. We're at 49% battery. Now I know you can hear a lot of traffic, but we're flying over a mesa right now. So there's literally nothing under this bird. She could go crash into the ground. The only ones that would be affected would maybe be some groundhogs or prairie dogs. All right, this is the last leg of the mission. So she's coming home now. All right, I must say I'm a little disappointed. 28% battery left, but we'll do some more testing. With the other props, we landed at 37%, so we got a little more flight out of those. The first flight I did with the standard props, the OEM props, we took off, battery was at 96%, and when we landed, the battery was at 37%. With the high altitude props, battery life was at 96% at takeoff and 29% at landing. So we used a little more battery with the altitude props. This was just two flights, so this is inconclusive. I should say that the battery I used for the altitude props has about 42 flights on it. Whereas the battery I used for the OEM props only had about 22 flights on it. So that might have something to do with it. I'm sure batteries degrade. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna fly again with the altitude props with the newer battery. We'll see if that changes our results. Hey everybody, how's it going? So it's the next day and it's another gorgeous day out. So now I'm going to do the test again. So I have yesterday's mission loaded again, same mission. So she's gonna fly exactly like she did yesterday. And launch, fully autonomous. Looks like now she's flying the north-south portion of the grid. So we're at our halfway point. All right, the last leg of the map. Battery's at 42%. All right, and she's coming home. All right, you can see battery's at 32%, and battery's at basically 99% when she started. Let's do another flight with the OEM props. All right, heading off on the same mission. Battery was at 100%, we're now at 95. All right, there she is on her second mission. say I'm rather impressed she landed completely autonomously with 42% battery left on the first day with the OEM propellers we took off with 96% battery and landed with 37% battery for a total of 59% usage on that same day with the high altitude props we took off with 96% battery landed with 29% battery for a total of 67% usage. On the second day, with the OEM props, we took off with 100% battery, landed with 42% battery for a total usage of 57% battery. On the second day, the high altitude props, we took off with 99% battery, landed with 32% battery for a total usage of 67% battery. So the OEM propellers used 59 and 57% respectively, while the high altitude propellers use 67% both days. Conclusion, at 5,200 feet, the high altitude propellers net no advantage. In fact, you get a disadvantage. That said, what I do like about the high altitude propellers is they are quieter. So there might be some situations where I might take that eight to 10% performance hit to get a quieter drone. Your mileage may vary. <laughs>